When I was, uh, when I was growing up, uh, mom bought me, mom and dad bought me a, uh, my very first piano. It was an old upright piano. And I liked it because you could open the front of it and watch all the hammers hitting all the keys. And I thought that was neat. And, you know, I guess I started doing this back then. But, you know, when I'm really struggling or I'm down about something or I'm worried about something or got the cares of life, I would always go to my piano and take everything out on the piano. And I would just play and I would play loud. Sometimes if I made too many mistakes, I'd get a little upset and hit it. Well, I broke the E-flat hammer. The E-flat, right above middle C, I, did, I must have hit it so hard it broke the hammer in half. Now, about a third of our songs in our hymn book use that E-flat. And I learned how to play by playing Scott Joplin ragtime music. I learned how to do this with my left hand. And that's kind of my playing style. Well, a lot of his songs were written in E-flat, B-flat, or A-flat, and you need that E-flat. And it just ain't right. Never got it fixed. But I, um, I used to just, I, if, I, if, if something's going on with me, I like to go to my piano and just boom, 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 boom. And those songs are good, amen? Those songs are worth singing. That's better than Whiskey River and Papa Top and, what was it, Eric Clapton saying cocaine? Got bad news, want to fix the blues, cocaine? I don't think that works too well. Amen? Amen. I was driving to the church today and um, had a pretty rough morning. And on the way over, I, I kept, I, I don't know if I was saying it to myself or God was saying it to me, but I have a God. And what that means is, if, if I don't have a God that I can go to when I've done something wrong and admit it and get it fixed right, if I don't have a God when I've got problems and cares and I go to Him and tell Him what's wrong with me and what's wrong with everybody else, if I have a God that there's a situation that needs a miracle, and I take that to God because He's the only one who can make it right. If I don't have a God that can do that, then I'm wasting my time here. I will resign. I will get out of the ministry. But I have a God. I have a God who's higher than the highest, greater than the greatest, he is smarter than the smartest person in the world. The collected wisdom of all the ages, God is higher than that. So I'm convinced I have a God. I have, an, I have the best lawyer in the world, free. The advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. That's who I have. Somebody say amen. Amen. I'm glad you came to church tonight. I hope you're glad that you came, and I hope you're better glad by the time you leave out of here. I hope you don't go out here going, well, it could have been better. Amen. Uh, let's talk about God tonight. Uh, the last point we were on is God is all-powerful. Omnipotent is the word, and that word is actually in the Bible. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth means he has all the power. There is nobody who outpowers God. Nobody. The, here's my theory about what's going on in the world. I believe the devil's building an army. I believe it. I believe he's building an army. An army of devils and an army of evil people. 
And he thinks that if he collects all, this, all the angels on his side that he's got, and then all the people, and join them all together so that their strength and their mind is one. They're fighting as one man. If you look in 1 Samuel 17, you had the Israelite army and you had the Philistine army, but they weren't fighting, were they? Who was? David and Goliath. You had one man here and one man here. And that's the fight right there. Okay? The, the, the army of the Israelites knew they could not beat that giant. They knew it. That's why when Goliath went out for 40 days straight and said, bring one, bring me a man. And I, was, I thought about that, George. I thought, what a big sissy. Here's this man. He's, he's way over nine feet tall. Got all this armor on him that no man in the world can pick up except him. And he's not saying... Bring everybody down here. I'll whip them all. He's saying, send me one man. And I'm going, you little coward, you, you little sissy. Of course you can beat one man. But he didn't count on David because David had a God. David had a God. So our God's more powerful than all the gods. All the people put together, he's more powerful than all the kings, the judges, the rulers, the princes, the principalities. He's more powerful than all of that. Your sheet, these should be on the sheet. I added some to it today that are not on the sheet, but we'll give that next, uh, next week. Isaiah 50 verse 2, Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke, I dry up the sea. Did that really happen? God rebuked the sea, and it split in half, and the Israelites walked across on dry ground. Show me a God that can do that. I have a God that can do that. Amen? I said, I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stinketh because there is no water, and dieth for thirst. My God did that. My God dried up the rivers, he dried up the ocean, he rebuked it. My God has power. My God is so powerful that he can take a nap in the bottom of a boat, wake up, walk outside and say, peace, be still. And boom, the storm's over with. That's my God. He didn't have to whoop up power in him. He didn't have to do a dance. He didn't have to play a bunch of drums. He didn't have to sprinkle uh, fairy dust out into the wind to get the storm to stop. He woke up from his nap, walked out on the deck and said, Hush! Peace, be still. And instantly the storm quit. That's power. Uh, Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings on your word tonight. Father, I, I don't have a choice but to thank you for the day that you've given us. And uh, I thank you, Lord, for the challenge that you bring to life. I pray, dear God, that it would be a blessing uh, to me, to my family, to these good people here at Bethel, to these good people that are joining with us online. I pray, dear God, that what you do to me, what you do with me, and what you do through me would be a blessing to you first, you first always. And then to your people. And then I'll go behind and pick up all the crumbs. And I'll be happy doing that. Father, just bless your word tonight. Teach us about you, we pray in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 27, 5. This is God's power. He said, I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm and have given it to whom it seemed meet unto me. Uh, we, we covered this here a while back, but turn to uh, Genesis 10. Very quickly, Genesis 10, verse 32. These are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations in their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. It was God who said to one group, you live over here. It was God who said to another group, you guys sit down and live over here. 
It was God that said to these people over here, you live, this is your area, this is your neck of the woods, this is yours, you live here. It was God who did that. That's what he says there in Jeremiah. He said, I've given it to whom it seemed to be unto me. And here we are as nations fighting over ground, fighting over territory. My goodness, even, na- even neighbors, next door neighbors, will fight over whose blade of grass that is. Bless his heart. I, I, I respected him. He was an old man, the man that built this house next to us. But my first encounter with him didn't go so well. Because I went out and I mowed the grass out here. And I just kind of picked, there's no, there's no yard line out, there's no chalk line out here. There's no fence, there's no stake or post or nothing like that. So I just kind of guessed, Brother Chris, at where the line would be. And I mowed a line up, the, up and down the hill on the side of the church and in the front yard up here. Come out two days later. And he mowed his grass and left a patch of grass in the middle this wide. He was telling me, that's your grass. Now, I don't know where in the world he'd come up with that. But it's funny because neighbors will fight over a blade of grass and who's, who's, whose blade of grass that is, who's got to cut it, and no, you can't put a fence there because that's my grass. You can't do it. And, but God will give it to whoever he wants because he's got the power, Amen. Jeremiah 32, 17, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power. And here he says it again, thy stretched out arm. There's nothing too hard for thee. You know what that stretched out arm means? God does not wait for us to come rolling into him. God reaches out to us to bring us into him. That's God's, uh, show me an idol. Show me an idol that can reach out and actually help somebody. And yet, why do people pray to statues? I never understand it. Never get it all my life. Uh, Nahum chapter 1 verse 3, The Lord is slow to anger, great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. Listen to that. God will not at all acquit the wicked. You know what that word means, right? If they're guilty, God will not let them get, get by with what they did. He's going to deal with it. He's going to judge it. You just watch and see. And then you just get out on your knees before God and tell God, thank you that he forgave what you did. But these, uh, these people that all the time, oh, God's going to weigh my good deeds against my bad deeds. No, the Bible says right there, God will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath this way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Now, I run into a lot of conspiracy theories on the internet. Some of them I like, some of them I think are just... Pfft. And these ones that say, well, the government's got a machine. And they caused Hurricane Katrina. No. God did. God did. And God didn't need a machine to do it. He hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Meaning, he can stir them up, or he can let them lay. It's God's decision. Matthew 6, 13. Here's the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray after this manner. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the prayer ends, for thine is the kingdom and the what? The power and the glory forever. Amen. The devil is always going to try it. Always going to try it. But he's not going to get it. Matthew twenty two twenty nine. Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err. Now pay attention to this. You do err not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Because, as it turns out, the attributes of God are also the same attributes of the Bible. If God is all-powerful, then the Bible is all-powerful. And if you don't believe that, Jesus quoted scripture to Satan and Satan could not stand in the presence of the word of God. He had to leave. That's power. 
That's power. There are people on this earth. There are people to this day on this earth who could look at somebody and snap their fingers and that person will go kill themselves. Now, we don't like to think about that in this modern age, but that still exists in places. Mafia bosses, people with a lot of what? Power, who can look at somebody and say, I, I want this person killed, go do it. And you gotta go do it. And when it comes to getting caught and taking the fall, you take the fall, because that man's got power. Amen? That stuff happens, right? God's got all the power. There is nothing, there is nothing that happens that God says, oh, I wish I could have done that, but I couldn't. There's nothing that happens that way. Jesus, as he said, you do err not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. God is omnipotent, all powerful. Nothing can stop him and nothing can stop the word of God. If you want an example of that, it's called springtime and it's called driveway. You build a driveway, don't care if you build it out of gravel, asphalt, concrete. If there's one seed underneath all that, it's going to come out and find a way to get out there. It's got that because seed is DNA. It's the book that God wrote and that book's got power. And it, you can't stop it. Amen. Matthew 24, 30, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Well, I'm looking forward to that day. Amen. Wouldn't bother me if it would have happened yesterday, but it didn't. Matthew 28, 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now, how did Jesus get that power? Turn in your Bible to Revelation. This is God giving Jesus the power. He actually put it in his hand. Revelation 5, verse 1. I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. See, now you have a picture of that. You have Moses who comes down from heaven. Moses coming down from the top of Mount Sinai. And he's got a book in his hand. It's called the Ten Commandments. It was delivered to him by God. And those Ten Commandments had authority over those people. And those people, Moses knew it and the people knew it. When Moses came down the second time and he showed them what was in there, they said, all that God has said, we will do. They consented to it. They said, we'll do it. That book has power in it. And the devil knows it. That's why he's trying to get it shut down everywhere. By the way, I'm going to say this. There is a, um, a guy wrote me a letter. I read it just a while ago. I don't know much about the situation. But he said, pray about, there's a, a, a man that is trying to save his six-year-old boy. He's got a six-year-old boy. Right now, the boy's mother has custody of the child. And his mother, since this boy was three years old, has been dressing him up in a dress and calling him by a girl's name, sending him to school as he was a girl. And they ask him, do you want to be? No, I want to be a boy. And the dad is trying to get this overturned because this mama is going to have that boy have surgery on him as a child. Surgically remove to turn him into a girl. And the website, I think, is called SaveJames.com. Now, again, I don't know anything. I don't know if these people are liberal, conservative, Christian, Buddhist. I don't know. But that fight's coming. When this world thinks that it has the power to change the DNA. See, it's the DNA that determines male or female, is it not? God is the one who writes that. God wrote you a male. God wrote you a female. And then some we kind of ain't figured out yet. But God wrote it in their DNA. And when man thinks he has the authority to overrule God's decision on whether that's a boy or a girl, God's going to have something to say about it, I guarantee you. God is going to have something to say about it. All power is given to me in heaven and earth. So that power was given to him by the book. Um, verse... 
7, And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou hast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, na people, and nation. And hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. See, the power was in the book. Christ's authority to rule was done by way of God giving the book of authority to His Son. Now the Son can rule. Amen? It's done by the book. John 10, 18. I got that up on the screen. You turn there. No man take it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. He's talking about his life. Pilate said, don't you know that I have the power to take your life? Jesus said, the only power that you have is the power that is given to you by my Father. Amen. And I have that power. I have power to lay down my life. I have power to take it back up again. And you ain't got to say that. If you want me dead, I'm not dead until I say I'm dead. And what did Jesus say? It is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. I mean, he could have died at any time, but not until he said. When God speaks, there's life. When God speaks, there's death. But it's the power of God alone. John 19. That's why I, I just quoted that. Then saith Pilate to him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Romans 13. In fact, turn to Romans 13. I have gotten probably in more trouble with people over Romans 13 than probably any other thing I've ever taught in all my ministry. I do not like corrupt government. I do not like corrupt politicians. I do not like corrupt judges. I do not like corrupt presidents, governors, congressmen. I don't like corrupt road crews. I don't like corrupt anything. But God ordains government over men. God ordains it. You take your rebellion somewhere else. It does not belong amongst God's people. Now I'm going to give you an example. When Moses was sent to Pharaoh... Did God not give Moses the exact words to say? And what were those words? Let my people go. Let them. Because Israel was under Pharaoh's authority. Who put them there? God did back in the book of Genesis when Joseph had his father and his brethren brought to him in Goshen to save their life. They, God brought them to Egypt, but God did that to show forth his power. At no time, at, you check me out in the Bible, you go read it for yourself. At no time did God ever say, Moses, tell Pharaoh, we're just leaving and that's it. It wasn't until Pharaoh released the Israelites. Now God changed his mind. But God is the one who put Israel under Pharaoh's authority. Not even God was going to rebel against that. God does not teach you rebellion to just any politician or any rule that you don't like. Now, exceptions, yes. If an earthly authority causes you or attempts to cause you to do something that breaks God's authority, then, Peter, Peter, James, and John, they were commanded by the Sanhedrin, do not preach anymore in the name of Jesus. And they said, we ought to obey God rather than man. And what did they do after that? They went out and preached in the name of Jesus. Okay? The Apostle Paul, 
when, he, when the Jews were really trying to kill him, did the Apostle Paul rebel against Roman authority or did he appeal to Roman authority? He appealed to it. See, even that, at that time, Caesar thought he was God. That's wicked. And we have people saying, I'll never bow to an authority like that. You will if God says so. Now, I mean it. I'm not, and people have accused me, so, oh, pastor, you're one of those pastors, you're one of them FEMA pastors. When the trucks come by to come get us all, put us in the camps, you're going to tell them to go get in the truck. Are you stupid? That's what I've been accused of. I had videos made on me, all kinds of stuff. This Bible's right. This Bible tells us, this Bible has power over us. And this Bible tells us to obey earthly authority so long as that authority does not force us to disobey God. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of, say it, God. The powers that be are ordained of God. We made it through eight years of Obama, did we not? We survived. We still got our guns. We still have our Bibles. We made it. There was no rebellion. There was no shutdown of the country. No civil war. We made it. Who put Obama in office? For whatever reason, God did. God did it. And I believe the Bible, people. That may not make me popular with some people that are online or some people here. But authority is authority. And rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Let's keep reading. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. Do you think that you ought to put a seatbelt on when you get in your car? Law says you've got to put a seatbelt on when you get in your car. Is that a good rule? It's, it's, it's smart. I think there's wisdom behind it. Law says if that number says 55, then you ought not go 56. Is there wisdom in that? Is there wisdom in a speed limit on a road? Is there wisdom? Is there a reason? Is there a civil, responsible reason why there are speed limits on roads? There has to be, because there's too many idiots with driver's license. Yeah. I've been to a third world country where they don't have the highway standards, the policing standards, the speed limits. You sit and suck diesel smoke the whole time you're on a Nairobi street, because they don't have any emission standards. No stop signs, no police, no... No highway patrol. It's every man for himself. And there are gangs. Mike will tell you there are gangs between Nairobi and Samburu of 13, 14 year old boys that will pull you over and shoot you dead. And the cops, whatever, whatever police they have, don't even dare go up there because it's too dangerous for them. They don't go up there. I believe we ought to have cops out on the streets. Making everybody follow the same laws. Amen. Now, we don't have a perfect country. We don't have a perfect court system. We don't have a perfect government. But I believe we got it better than anybody else does. And they have not told us yet that we can't have a Bible and we can't have a gun. They've not told us that yet. They've not told us that we have to involuntary abort our second and third child like they did in China for years. That one you break. They've not told us yet to violate God's authority and God's word. On the day that they do, I'm all for it. Let's push back. Amen? But God said it very plainly here. 
Whosoever resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. How, I mean, how clear is that? How clear is that? And I've had people write me emails. Oh, Pastor, you don't understand the context. Paul was only talking about like in the church. Where does it say that? Where does it say that? Where does it say that? Romans 12, Romans 11. It's not there. Uh, I can't. It's in Timothy somewhere where Paul told Timothy that in order to lead a quiet and peaceable life, you pray for those that are in rule and authority over you and obey them. In Romans 13, it says, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. As a policeman yesterday filling up his tank. And I said, Sir, thank you for your service. I appreciate what you do. And he said, Thank you for that. He knew I wasn't trying to sidle up to him to get some kind of legal favor out of him. I just told him, Appreciate what you do. Now, I don't know if that man's better morally than me or not. But he carries a sword. And his badge gives him authority. And he's out there hunting guys down that are a danger to Jefferson County, Missouri. So you read your Bible. Verse uh, 4. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. That's what cops are for. And we'd probably need more of them now. There's already enough rebellion to police authority. Is that police authority abused? Yes, a thousand times yes. But not by all of them. Just because one cop doesn't treat people right doesn't mean, does not give us, even as Bible believers, the uh, the permission to rebel against all government authority. If that cop's cheating on his wife and he's a drunk, but he pulls you, he's sober on the job and he pulls you over, you pull over. He has the authority to pull you over. No, I'm not a sovereign citizen. The only sovereign is God. God has the power. Now, if you want to rebel, I can't stop you. I can't talk you out of it. But you're going to answer to God for what you did. We were supposed to teach our children to obey their teachers at school. And yet, I can tell you after 12 or 13 years of running a Christian school, is that most parents don't teach their children to respect they're school teachers. Because I didn't have, Brother James, I didn't have a problem out of the students. I had problems out of parents. Who, whenever a kid got in trouble at school, I knew I was fixing to get it. And almost without fail, always did. By the same people. We were supposed to teach our children to respect police officers. We're supposed to teach our children to respect school principals, school teachers. We're supposed to teach our children to respect and honor those who are in authority and those who stand up in a dangerous zone for us. We're supposed to teach our children to respect that. But nowadays, most parents teach their children rebellion because they're in rebellion. I'm just saying God has the power, you don't. Now, He'll give you power. And one of these days, we're going to come with Jesus and we're going to stomp the devil and all the devils and we're going to tread down the earth and we're going to rule with Jesus for a thousand years. But see, then we'll be perfect. We won't be taking bribes then and being afraid of the faces of men. Do I still have a job here? Hebrews chapter 1. Christ is the brightness of His glory. And the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. See, there, God's connecting it here all together. God has the power, his son has the power, and his word has the power. His word has the authority. I don't. Upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand, the majesty on high. Right hand is always the hand of authority. 
Hand of power. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick and what? Powerful. Word of God is powerful. Sharper than any of the strange woman's two-edged sword tongue words. See, it's the strange woman in the book of Proverbs. She, her tongue is sharp as a two-edged sword. And she uses words to get her way. She is the one who is in rebellion against authority. She is the one who does that. She is the one who stole Naboth's vineyard and got it for Ahab against biblical authority. Now see, Ahab, there's an instance right there where it is very clear. Ahab said, Ahab's the king now. He said to Naboth, sell me your vineyard. I'll give you one just like it or give you one better. I'll give you the worth of it money. And Naboth said, God forbid it me to give you my vineyard. And Naboth refused the king's order. And God was in that. Amen? But there may be a price to pay. What did it cost Naboth? His life. It cost him his life. When you stand up for God, stand up for what's right. There's honor in that, but that doesn't mean that everybody in the world's going to like it. And at some point, they're going to come after us all. I believe that. There's a pastor down in Arizona that I absolutely do not like. I do not like anything about him. He follows the King James Bible, but he follows it poorly in my opinion. Huh? I'm not saying... But his church's bank shut down all of his accounts and kicked him out and said, we'll, we'll mail you a check for what your balance is, but we're not banking with you ever again. Now, I don't like what he says. And the reason why they did it was he's the one going out telling everybody all homosexuals are going to hell. They have no salvation offered to him whatsoever. And he uses pretty rough language when he does it. And so the bank, it's their, it's their bank. They can do it if they want. So they close his account and send him out and say, go on, get out of here. There are others. Facebook has kicked them off. PayPal has kicked them out. We're on Facebook. We're on PayPal. Now I try to temper my language, not to hide anything and not to be a coward, but to make sure if I'm saying it, I'm using scripture to say it. But at some point, because I believe this book has authority, therefore it has protection under, see, I'm under protection. I'm under God's wings. And God will protect. But at some point, they're probably going to shut our Facebook down, shut our PayPal down, shut our bank account down. Are we still going to serve God? Then it's clear to me, then it's clear. But just because you think someone who is in authority is part of the Illuminati or they went to the Bilderberg group meeting or they sit in the Council of Four Relations or they're a Jesuit or they're whatever, secret society, just because you think that about them or it may be even true, God put them in authority. And not everything they say is wrong. Okay? Follow, read your Bible and ask God. Is what I can t tell you. Um, First Peter three twenty two has gone into heaven is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto Him. That means all the devils that are after you, Jesus can go. Go on, get out of here. Make them go away, just like that. I've I I have felt and experienced that happen. I was aware of times when all I was under such heavy oppression. And instantly, it was all gone, just like that. And I knew then that every devil had scattered. You could feel it. That's the authority that our Savior and our God has. He's got all the authority. Amen. Revelation 4, 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were 
created. So God has all the power because he created everything. It's his. He's got power over it. Revelation 19, 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. This whole Bible finishes with God's in charge. No more devil. Amen. No more Clintons. Amen. No more Vaticans. No more Illuminatis. No more wickedness. Huh? No more isms. Hallelujah. All right. Now, let's touch on this for a few minutes tonight. God is not only all powerful, He's all knowing. And by the way, they're linked. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. We had a guy that followed our ministry. I haven't heard from him in a while, but he was a professional mediator. And I mean big time corporate mediator where large corporations were, were in a dispute with their union workers. And he would be called in to mediate between the two. And he said, I have to know both sides' positions. I have to know everything they're doing. I have to know what the contract says. I have to know everything that can be known about these two groups and their quarrel or I won't make the right decision. Knowledge is power. So some, now, so I'll ask you the question, is there anything that God doesn't know? And don't say the stupid thing, God doesn't know how to invent a machine that kills God. That's stupid. He does. He just don't use it. Amen. <laughs> he would never build it, okay? I mean, I don't know. But God, God knows it. God knows it. God knows every thought in your mind, good or bad. God knows the number of atoms in the universe. God knows the number of hairs on your head. Just to keep track of that one's a tough job for one God, amen? But God knows it all. Psalm 147, 4. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. And that's, that is, I cannot, I cannot fathom that. Just that one thing. Just that one thing of God knowing an innumerable company of angels by their name. Now, think of, think of how God created Adam, though. God created Adam in God's image. And what did God give Adam a job to do? Similar to what I just said. Name all the animals. You see the similarity? God gave that little bit of authority and power to Adam to name every creature in this earth. Adam had a big brain, amen? He, he, we know he was eating good to get that. And then one bite made him stupid, amen? But he tells the number of the stars, he called them all by their names. Great is our Lord, and of great, see it's connected, and of great power. His understanding is what? Infinite. God knows, I've used this before, but God knows where 33 and a third ends. A repeating decimal of 0.33333 to us has, God knows where the end of it is. That's, that's amazing. His understanding is infinite, meaning there is absolutely no limit to God's knowing. And I, we had a situation a while back. I got introduced to a man by the name of Finnis Dake. And when I started reading the things he said, it just, it just flipped me out. Venice Dake had this idea that God, of course God doesn't know everything. Because God had to dispatch angels to go and find out what exactly what was going on and report back to him so that he would know it. That's on the list and one of the silliest things I've ever heard. It's not the silliest, but it's on the list. To think that and I've, I've been saying this all day. I have a God. And if, and if my God had to rely on 
me to tell him something. I wouldn't have much of a God, would I? If I had to rely on a God who had to have angels tell him something, then I wouldn't have much of a God. But I have a God who knows everything, and he knows all the outcomes. You'll never win the chess game with God. You'll never win. You'll fight God, and you'll lose every time. By the way, we're building a computer that can do that. We're building a God. We're building a machine that thinks like a God thinks. Trying to have unlimited power like God does. You think about that. Psalm 37, 18, The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Who, who does, what does God know? God knows exactly how many days you've got on this earth. To the second, God knows it. Psalm 40, verse 9, I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. See that right there? That tells you right there. God knows it all. God doesn't need angels to go out and tell. Now, I didn't, I didn't catch that. What did they say? You were praying, and God was going, I'm sorry, I was paying attention to this guy over here. What did you say again? That's not God. I have a God. When everybody in the world who prays to God can pray all at once, and yet God can single my prayer out and know exactly what I said and know what I want and know what I need and then be able to do better than what I asked him for, that's the God that I have. Matthew 9, chapter 10, are, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? Which is not much money. Cheap. So you can say it like this. It's not... It's not two pieces of chicken sold for five bucks with mashed potatoes and gravy and biscuit. So it ain't much, right? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. God pays attention to the stupid birds. Benjamin Franklin quoted this verse before Congress. When they, Roy, when they were writing the Constitution... They came to a place where they were not getting anything done. They were getting nowhere. And they were fighting, arguing about this and that and the other. Benjamin Franklin, who, I mean, as far as godly men, way down on, I mean, he was way down there. He, he used to go to France and party with them French women over there. But Benjamin Franklin, God raised that man up to say something wisest thing. He said, if not a sparrow can fall from the heaven without our God's knowing and approval, how do we think that we can build a nation without God's help? So it was Franklin who said, I employ all of us men to go to our homes, get our pastors, and get godly counsel, and pray, and fast, and seek out God so that when we come back here, we can form this great nation. It took a godless heathen to say that to men who should have known better. Amen? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. And it doesn't stop there, and you know that. God knows everything. God knows me. Right and wrong, God knows me. God knows where my troubles are. God knows where my gifts are. God knows what sins I committed, what sins I will commit. God knows it. That's the God that I serve. It's the only one I'll serve. 